As I said, tonight's topic is all about core strength. And what I'll do is I'll describe what the core is and how it functions. Um, and also what happens if you don't have good core strength, why it's important. And then Timo will explain a few exercises to you and he will, I'm very happy because he's, he's going to show you how to do a proper crunch, which is one of the things that everybody gets wrong. <laughs> okay, so let's dive right, right in. What is the core? Now, your core muscles is a lot more than just the stomach muscles. Most of my patients often can say, oh, it's stomach muscles, but it actually involves all the muscles around your trunk. So your back muscles, even your bum, your, your glutes and things, everything around the pelvis and your shoulder girdle. And you've got a deep layer, which the pelvic floors and your diaphragm and things and are involved in. And then you've got your superficial layer, which are the bigger, the moving muscles, and they work in symbiosis. Now, a lot of people often overuse the superficial abs and things, and they don't really look after the um, pelvic floors. So it's important to incorporate both of that. So why is the core important? Now, I think the easiest thing I thought about today was if you can think of it as um, when your arm or your leg moves, it's kind of like a slingshot. And if this slingshot, if the base is on an unstable base like jelly, then every time you try and hit the target, it's going to go in a slightly different direction because you don't really have control over it. And that's the same. If you have a core that's not that strong and you go for a run, your legs don't quite work in such a coordinated fashion or your back, for instance, or if you're playing golf, your arms don't swing in the best way that they could. Um, however, if you've got a solid base, then that slingshot's going to go exactly where you want to control it every time you do it. So you can see why it's important. Um, so it's not surprising that a good core has been indicated to help performance. And we're talking specifically about running and walking today, but actually it's really important for any sports where you um, use a racket or golf because it, it helps with the transfer of your force through your body. body. Now, again, for sprinting, for instance, as well, if you want to be a strong sprinter, you really need a strong core because you've got to use your arms to get that force through the body. And if you don't have the strong core, you can't actually get it through there. Um, but then my area that I'm more interested in is that it really helps to prevent injuries. And because we're focusing on the lower body with running and walking today, I'm going to start from the lower back and just talk you through that a little bit. So let me see if you can see me. I'm getting confused with my camera tonight. Oh, here we go. It's more to this side. Um, okay, so if you can see my back and if my core's not strong, every step I give or every step I give with running, um, you get an uncoordinated movement in the pelvis. So you can get excessive that it compresses in the lower back. Also, if you're on one leg, you can get that your pelvis drops, which will ha have the effect that, let me just bring my camera down a bit. The effect that your lower back squashes on this side can you see that your hips going to squash as well? And then if we look lower down, you're also going to get that your knee turn in and that your foot even turns in. So you can actually get a whole host of injuries from a core that's not strong, not just a back injury, but also a hip, a knee, and even your foot injuries. Um, so Timo, can you give us a few ideas of how you can strengthen the core and how you go about it? Absolutely. Okay, so um, the first exercise we're going to go through is the crunch. Um, two reasons, obviously, it's, it's a very basic exercise. Um, and also, it's an exercise that I see people do very, very wrong very often. Um, so let me just demonstrate it a few times, a few reps, and I'll talk through it. <laughs> so you've probably noticed that my range of movement isn't quite as big as you might expect. So the main thing that I'm focusing on is putting my belly button in towards my spine, okay, that's going to engage the deep uh, core stabilizers and TBA. And um, so once you've pulled that right in, we're going to contract your core hard, so reach up to touch your knees. Now that's all we need to go up to. We don't need to go up any higher. As soon as that lower back comes off the ground, in my case, we're going to put a little bit of uh, pressure on that, which over time is going to be um, you know, very good for the spine health. So uh, you don't need to come all the way up, focus on the deep contractions. Try and close the gap between your, your ribs and your pelvis. Uh, the second exercise we're going to do uh, is called the Russian twist. So 
Um, it is going to contradict something that I just said. Um, <laughs> in terms of that. Um, but if we're unloaded, it should be absolutely fine. So again, we're putting that belly button right in towards the spine to keep that core nice and solid. We're going to go chest up and shoulders back. I don't want to see any punching. That's going to round out the lower back as well a little bit. But really nice to be elongated. You're going to twist round to one side. So I turn my back on you. And then round to the other side. Always trying to keep that core in. Okay, as soon as you feel like your belly button is popping out, then your, your deep layers are disengaged. So, uh, now, so what? If I, if I can interrupt there, what what are the some of the most common mistakes you see people make with that? Oh, sorry, with the Russian twist, um, a lot of people will just load up the weights and now start swinging from side to side. Obviously, there's a huge amount of momentum there, and your and your lumbar spine, your lower back is going to get a real pounding, especially if you're using weight like that. Um, so I always say reduce range of movement. Yeah. So you're looking at 45 degrees, 50 degrees, you don't want to go through the mouth. Um, and obviously very, very lightweight, if any. Um, and then obviously not too often, but you don't want to be doing that every single workout. Um, so that's obviously good for your, your rotational strength and that slingshot effect that, that Mariko was saying earlier. Uh, that rotational, uh, that those rotations in the Russian twist are really going to help that. Excellent, thank you. Cool. So the last one I'm going to show you is the core stability exercise. Uh, it's called the paddle press. Um, so we're essentially resisting against an increase in tension. Okay, so let me just demonstrate again. It looks really, really simple. Don't be fools. Three sets of 20 on this, and you're definitely be feeling it. So again, what I'm doing is I'm pulling my belly button right into the spine, pulling my shoulder blades back together, and then pushing my hands out. So as I push out, there's actually a greater distance between me and the band here. So what happens is my, my, my body wants to pull this way. I'm having to use my core, uh, my obliques, and my uh, TBA to keep everything locked in place. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to push around, we want to keep that all nice and tight. So if you want to make that harder, we can move away, not going off the screen. So yeah, the further away from it you are, the harder it's going to be. So that's going to help you um, stay nice and aligned whenever you're doing your running or any, any exercise, really. Um, and that's going to help you stay really safe and keep those hips nice and level. Okay, so you mentioned there that um, you don't want to do these things too often. What What's the ideal number of times or sets or reps that you use? Or how do you decide when somebody's worked their core to the max for that day? Sure. Well, what I normally say is as long as you can feel the, uh, the contractions deep in your core and it really starts to burn, um, obviously if you're feeling pain in your lower back, then you find a little bit too hard and a little mm -hmm. bit too heavy. Um, but yeah, twice a week maximum for core, uh, core work, you don't need to do too much of it. If you're doing resistance exercises anyway, you should be engaging your core effectively. Um, so yeah. that will give you a super strong workout too. Yeah, and I guess that's, to be honest, that's actually something that people don't really appreciate is that if they're doing free weights with their arms, they should be engaging their core already absolutely. Yeah, and working absolutely. it through that. Um, yeah. It's not that you have to do specific things always. You can get a really good workout um, with other things. Um, yeah. What was I going to ask you about there now? Okay, so um, the other question that I get asked often is, people want a whole set of things that they can do in a session. Um, how many exercises do you normally advise in one session for one type of muscle group, like for the core, for instance? How many would you put in there, or do you not really work it that way? Well, I mean, it's, it's a difficult question to ask. It depends a lot on the individual, on how mm -hmm. advanced they are, or you know, how fit they are, um, what kind of things they've done in the past. Um, but generally speaking, I do it on a, on a time basis. Mm -hmm. um, so if any workout is going longer than an hour, you know, any resistance workout, I should say, um, is going on for longer than an hour, then I think that the, you know, the intensity could be increased and the duration could be decreased a little bit. Um, okay. But roughly speaking, you know, five or six sets, um, looking at about four or five different exercises, three to four sets on each of those exercises. Okay, yes. So that, that, that would be just for core though. So what I normally do is, is I add three, three, four exercises in a little circuit towards the end of the workout. Okay. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about preventing sports injuries, make sure you hit the subscribe button. See you next time.